Welcome back guys, nice to see you again. Today we've got an important discussion as a continuation from our last one. We had gone over starting a new community, the relevant skills, facilities, and outposts. Today we'll be taking things a step further. Come have a snack with us, and we'll talk all about it. Hey guys, help yourself to some soup if you like. So our discussion today will be more on the front of moving out, and managing one's base beyond this point in the lethal zone. Well, this should be interesting. In our last discussion, a good amount of changes took place. How many different changes will there be this time? Well, quite a few, but let's get started. Junior? So the last time we discussed the tutorial home, we went through our first three skills and recommended additional skills before moving out, necessary facilities, and appropriate outposts. Yes, you recommended one start with computers, recycling, and lichenology. The facilities for the tutorial home you recommended were an infirmary, brain collector, and garden. Your proposed outposts were one gas and two food to help break even. But what did you recommend to have before moving out? Well, in our nightmare discussions, I had recommended having at least chemistry, utilities, and maybe even mechanics. For the lethal zone, however, I now recommend utilities and... This might surprise some of you, but I would say cooking, with the specialization of nutrition. What? Nutrition? Now I've got to hear this. How could nutrition possibly be taken as priority over chemistry or mechanics? Alright, the lethal zone is extremely expensive when it comes to crafting any kind of offensive measures, and I don't recommend making a frequent use of them except for use against play cards, but that is something we'll talk about in the near future. But anyway, with this in mind, use of the fuel resource will be significantly reduced and used for gas cans. As for mechanics, I had explained in the previous discussion that if one has the preppers pack, then it is virtually unnecessary having to sacrifice 100 crafting parts for a repair kit. Plus, I recommend crafting parts be used toward alternative tools. Couple this with careful driving, and repair kits and new vehicles will make up a minority of requirements, which is a different discussion altogether. Now, as for my choice of adopting nutrition, it is important to note which base I recommend. In my example, I decided to start off in Mayor Valley, and for those who are present for my large base guide, you'll understand why I would choose Camp Kalanqua. The lethal zone is rather taxing on one's morale, and will require more than just base-wide water and tamed infestations. Plus, a good number of bases come with kitchens that are essentially useless without slow cookers, or the cooking skill. Not to mention, modifications are extremely rare. Well, that was quite a mouthful. So, long story short, nutrition is your means of boosting morale to higher levels, and the absence of chemistry will negate the need for a still, as you had previously mentioned in your other base guides. Well, to make this easier to understand, do you have a formula for the facilities of a proposed base then? Absolutely. This will of course be with the intention of creating a self-sustaining base. So I highly recommend having two hydroponics, a solar array, a staging area, a rain collector, if there is no well, a red talon workshop, and ideally a kitchen, of course. Now I acknowledge that bedding and kitchens are not always built in, so this formula will alter depending on what is built into a given base. But there is at least one base in each map that can sustain this formula provided one remains strict with the survivors they recruit in reference to our last discussion which I highly recommend viewing. Well then, let's use Camp Kalanqua first, and go through the rest afterward. Sure, but one more thing first. It is almost paramount that one have a trader as their leader to build a trade depot to acquire the necessary modifications for each of their facilities. Simply put, one will need at least one compost bin and fertilizer, a signal antenna or signal booster if the trader shows up, a CNC mill, and whatever else one may desire. Afterwards, the trade depot can be switched out for a staging area. Alright, so in your Camp Kalanqua base, you were able to fit two hydroponics, an infirmary, and a red talon workshop, which is similar to a level 3 workshop. 
The kitchen is already built in. The base provides eight units of beds and comes with a well for base-wide water. Your outposts with just a signal antenna are three food, one gas, and one ammunition. This results in having positive gains across the board since your meds are covered by the foraging red talon agent and the survivor with lichenology. And with the additional seeds, I can quickly have a surplus of food to help create more seeds and supply my survivors with nutritious snacks. Due to the way this base is built, I can, in theory, take in more survivors and still have enough food production for a surplus. I can also create feasts regularly and use a slow cooker to boost morale by 20. I highly recommend this base, and build, if one is starting in Mayor Valley. Plus, with a signal booster, I can further supplement fuel with another outpost. Hmm, what about the brewing company? It also has ample space with two large slots for the solar array and staging area, two slots for hydroponics, a built-in well for water, spaces for infirmary and workshop, and an extra slot for beds. I'm noticing that it also comes with two stills that allow one to craft alcohol to use for the tasting facility, which will create a morale boost of 15. Wouldn't chemistry then be much more useful instead of nutrition? Absolutely, and you raise a good alternative. Just remember that one will have to outsource their beds for two slots and make this base a permanent option, lest they have to take on nutrition for alternative bases. But I personally prefer Camp Kalanqua since there is less of a hassle for beds. So with this setup, Camp Kalanqua works, but you said there is at least one base in each map that is fitting for this formula. Let's see what you say to Drucker County then. Well, outside of Camp Kalanqua, it's important to note that I specifically look for bases with passive bedding, and no passive taxes on ammo or other resources due to the base requirements. So for Drucker County, I highly recommend the Cabin Park Motel or the Strip Mall, if one manages to accrue eight survivors. Hmm, the Cabin Park Motel seems to work out in a similar fashion, but with some tweaks. It has two large slots for a solar array and staging area slash trade depot, one slot for an infirmary, one for a red talent workshop, two for hydroponics, and comes with a well, a kitchen, and three passive beds. Correct. This will require two outsourced beds, creating a surplus of one. And with the remaining two to four slots, depending on one's outposts, one can make a similar supplementation as Camp Kalanqua. One fuel and one ammo, or two of each. Or throw in a food outpost for extra. After all, ally bonuses will hold different effects for different communities. As I always say, results may vary. Alright, and what about the strip mall? One will need eight survivors for this base, and provided none of the survivors have any eating disorders, they will be consuming a harsh 16 units of food. But the base comes with three large slots, and four workable slots. This one will have different ways of playing out. One could recruit two additional survivors for the sole purpose of moving into the base and then exiling them to run a similar formula as the other two bases. With six survivors, one can have a solar array, a set of barracks, and a staging area. The workable slots can have a red talon workshop, a rain collector for the outdoor slot, and two hydroponics. One outpost will simply have to go toward bedding while the rest go to fuel, ammo, and extra food if the need is there. With eight survivors, one will likely have to substitute their barracks for a farm and ensure that they have at least an extra fertilizer or ideally a compost bin acquired from the trade depot. Four bedding units will have to be outsourced and the last outpost or two, if you have a signal booster, will go toward gas and ammo. The base is well stocked with amenities, and this is good for building skills instead of risking one's neck outside the base. I see. Alright, let's look at Providence Ridge. Based on the past reviews, I'm guessing you'll be looking at the Prescott Fire Station, Lumber Mill, and Weston Building Supply. The Prescott Fire Station is not a bad option if one maintains the base with six survivors. Due to the generator and watchtower, there will be additional taxes on one's resources that will require a signal booster, but will require a slightly different formula. It comes with four beds, so two outsourced beds should suffice. 
Two slots will go to hydroponics and one to a farm, while the last goes to an infirmary. The remaining four outposts will be given to fuel and ammo, but fuel and ammo will unfortunately break even with this setup. This base is not impossible with eight, but I personally wouldn't recommend it. Moving on to the Weston Builder Supply, this one is rather simple. It has two large slots and six workable small slots with no bedding amenities. So three outposts will go to beds, and the last two will go toward ammo and fuel. One small slot will go to a rain collector, one kitchen, one infirmary, one red talon workshop, and two hydroponics. Plus, it only requires four people to move in. I wouldn't consider the lumber mill to be the most viable option, since trying to fit morale, the demand of food, a workshop, an infirmary, and water while adjusting for the fuel offset to be a bit much for the lethal zone. It's not impossible, but very difficult, even with ideal mods. Alright, last we have Cascade Hills. There's a series of bases here, but from what I remember about them, we'll be looking at M&M Distributing and the Container Fort. Correct. Each of the other bases only have one large slot, so I don't really factor them into use in the lethal zone. But anyway, M&M Distributing has five workable small slots and two large slots. Even though it comes with a generator, I don't recommend its use, and would still install a solar array and staging area. One slot can then go to an infirmary, one to a kitchen, one to a rain collector, and the last two for hydroponics. There are no bedding amenities, so three outposts will go to beds while the final one to three will go to fuel, ammo, and whatever is needed. Unfortunately, the workshop is also built in, and won't have the same effects as a Red Talon workshop, but that is okay. Well, the container fort seems to be a no-brainer, since you crowned it as the best base in the game. It has eight passive beds without taking up any slots, two large slots, and six workable small slots. Well, with eight survivors, base management will always be tricky in the lethal zone. But with the container fort, although there is adequate bedding and no alternative resource taxes, there are also no morale boosting facilities, nor a well for water. So this is the only base I'd recommend one have an outsourced water facility, and supplement with four fuel outposts, one ammo, and one food. The other slots will go toward a staging area, solar array, three hydroponics, a red talon workshop, a kitchen, and infirmary. But with six survivors, no outsourcing will be necessary, and will create a similar scenario to Camp Kalenqua. Well, that was quite the coverage for the Lethal Zone, but you never did get into why you recommend this setup. Sure, it's sustainable, but you also said that you can't really craft much without a mechanic or a chemist. But it seems that your Red Talon Operative allows you to craft the first line of combustibles and incendiaries. What about dealing with plague hearts? I also noticed that you don't seem to build farms much, even though with a trader you can upgrade the farm a third time. Why is that? Uh, farms are extremely expensive in regards to materials. Meanwhile, hydroponics act as a fully upgraded one without all the materials and time required. Plus, I would only employ them if survivor numbers should go up to 8, but I personally don't really recommend it as it is much more demanding. As for plague hearts, well, that is something we'll cover next time. Otherwise, though... Wait... Although I wouldn't say that I have the most thorough summary, you recommend that your guests maintain a maximum of six survivors, with the last two survivors having nutrition and utilities. When moving out to a new base, ensure that there are at least two large slots, no taxes on resources, and having access to an infirmary, a Red Talon Workshop, two hydroponics, a rain collector or a well, and a kitchen. When selecting a leader, go with the trader first to acquire all of your necessary mods first, which will involve compost bins, ideally, or fertilizer, a CNC mill, a slow cooker, and a signal antenna, which can also be crafted for, I think, 300 crafting parts and 10 pieces of circuitry. Have a solar array and staging area when finished with the trade depot, and outsource at least one ammo and one to two fuel outposts, while outsourcing food to the rest if possible. 
I think it's also important to mention that survivors can also switch over to medication production for one of the hydroponics to boost meds. This shouldn't be a problem if they have a lichenologist. Beautiful summation, Miss Garrow. Thank you. Otherwise, though, that is all this onion... And this onion. That is all these onions have to say. Thank you very much for stopping by, guys, and I'll see you another time. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming by.